Hey guys, welcome back to the KSP Rejected Ships file. And today, we're viewing the solar powered plane. Now, I talked about this in the last Going to the Moon video, uh, part 2, and <laughs> believe it or not, this thing works, which is weird. But it does, and I have gotten Kerbals off of certain ships, and actually gotten them back safely. Alright, so this thing only requires 20 meters per second, not even that, to actually get going. I believe it's only 15 meters per second, and it'll start going, and I'm right now just at 15. And yep, up and away. So this thing completely relies on the sun, and if you do any kind of crazy maneuver or anything, um, and the solar panels actually lose contact with the sun, you're in trouble. Because the engines, um, it's not like they're base, like they have a power um, source if the solar panels aren't being used. Um, but the thing is. Is that if you do some kind of crazy maneuver, um, they'll actually lose their force, which is weird. But you would think that the engines wouldn't lose their force regardless of fuel. Well, apparently the ion engines do. And I have enough neon gas to take me to the moon and back. Like twice. I got 4,300 neon gas. That's crazy. Now the amount of sunlight and the time it would take me to get there is tremendous and by that time I, the wings would break or I couldn't land or something. But um, yeah, right now we have a couple of space stations in orbit and I'm going to try and see if it's physically possible to get this to space. Which in that point I wouldn't have any trouble actually having to worry about fuel or any I, I could probably get to Gilly landing on Gilly would be the hard part and I am not touching the Sun facing the Sun which is a problem now I did get this design from uh, Scott Manley and his sword powered plane uh, mine's just a little bit different the controls are slightly different there's tons more solar panels so it covers the main amounts of the wings um, and I believe mine has more neon gas. I believe his only has a couple neon gas canisters. Mine has like four. Five or six, actually. Four, five, or six. Um, I also have two battery packs, lights. Um, I have a ladder and a external command set, um, which is great. It's mainly just a Kerbal recovery vehicle. And you'll notice I'm only going 23.9, give or take, um, meters per second. My electric charge is going up and down. It's because I'm tilted up. But I could go forever. I'm actually going to try to circumnavigate with this uh, in this one episode, and that's going to take forever. But you can go into two times warp and still fly this thing. It won't go all crazy. I wouldn't recommend going anything over that because the slightest thing set this thing off and. It'll go into these weird, like, wind spirals, and it will freak out. I mean, like, I tried spinning it one time, because, like, all my train, all my planes, I try spinning, or doing a barrel roll, and see it's gonna do it. I think it might, but it's running out of fuel. It was... The fuel consumption rate for this is crazy. It's, like, 17... Uh, electric charge I, I don't know how much uh, electric charge is measured in I guess it'd be like volts or something but apparently this thing uses 17 volts uh, like per second which is crazy I don't I mean I don't think most houses use that no I take that back but like most you could probably power a couple of cars with it. Anyway, I'm going to try to keep this one short because I have one other thing I need to show you and I'm just going to try to do some kind of insane maneuver with this. 
and made it oh yeah this thing glides like crazy like if I turn off the engines which I just did um, I could fly it straight into the ground and then achieve like a hundred meters per second and then pull straight back up 100 meters per second pulling straight back up and I will fly like an eagle all right crashing this thing into the ground oh you thought I was gonna crash it straight into the ground yeah I am we splash all right that was fun all right going back to the space center I am going to show you I don't actually have this one pre-built so you can watch this and this is how you make a mass um accelerator yeah I guess you could call it a mass accelerator satellite this is the basic concept behind it basically it's just used to shoot kerbals <laughs> and I know that doesn't sound very friendly or anything but it, it's what it's used for just shooting kerbals places alright so I would recommend the cupola the uh, PPD 12 cupola module for this it just seems to work the best uh, overall and then how you have to have this well how you want to have this set up is I would recommend doing something like this if it would load okay yeah load I'm terribly sorry but um alright so you want to get your Rockamax brand decoupler I would recommend a parachute because you're going to be doing a lot of falling but who needs parachutes I'll just put a commutron on top just to make it look cool and I'm going to need some kind of fuel source for this um, for the commutron and I'll just put a single photovoltaic panel on here that should work alright and then now to the actual building of this alright so you're gonna wanna set one of those aside just seems to work the best and then one of these bad boys press W a couple times and attach it on like that and then like so and then have it set up to where the thruster is on the bottom and then the actual this part is on the top and then I'm just gonna do this really quick yeah I'll have that with the stage alright and then you're just gonna wanna launch now with mass ejection satellites um, it's a lot harder and I don't know if I could build one well I could I'll definitely try and I'll probably put it into the next going to the moon episode um, so yeah but this is the basic mechanics of it you're just gonna wanna throttle throttle straight up I'm not gonna get very far because this is supposed to be designed for space and in space if you hit an object with one force it's gonna keep on going alright so it looks like that that's coming out and then we there we go that's basically how it works and this could theoretically get you back to Kerbin uh, because like um, the man who hit a golf ball off the moon um, that golf ball is either still traveling today and he hit that back in 19 70 something it's crazy but um, it's still traveling today theoretically unless if it encountered another object or any kind of gravity and am I gonna bounce nope I'm gonna hit straight into the ground and explode all right well that pretty much does it for this episode um, and uh, see you guys